the special town meeting, Town of Conway, is open. Um, I've got a few things to explain to you first. And it's very nice on a cold winter day to see so many of you here. I did not expect this many, and that, uh, that just makes me happier. Thank you for taking time out of your busy lives to show up. Okay. So we have eight articles on the warrant that you've all received. You are going to see some colored papers. The yellow is the formal mo motions, which we struggled with so much last time. Do you remember that? Okay, but they're here again. And all this is, is the official words the select board is going to use in reference to each article. And they feel it's important that you know what these words are. But the Article 1 corresponds with Article 1 right down through Article 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay? So don't let it confuse you. This is just the official motion for the warrant article. So one means one, two means two. Did you get a blue, did they get a blue one too? Okay. Since we're changing uh, section 10 of the form and conduct of town meeting, you've been given the town of Conway bylaws, form and conduct, of town meeting and town government. And that's just so you have that to be able to understand how that we have rules to run the town meeting. Uh, I have been asked also that if you were bringing uh, handouts to town meeting today, the, the select board, or, and they would like to know that beforehand. So we're prepared for that. They don't just come and get put on seats without us knowing or anything. So they've asked me to pass that along. And now, let's see. Oh, they, they have these two? Okay. Okay, now, um, these are our town meeting motions. You have this on a sheet also. I did not realize that. And that's just a, it gives you an idea of how these motions work under the guidelines that we use, meaning it tells you if, if, um, if you have a motion to postpone, it tells you that you need a second, it tells you that it's debatable, it tells you that it's amendable or not, and if there's a vote required, if it's a two-thirds or a majority vote, and whether you can reconsider or interrupt. It just explains those, it gives you an idea so you got a little better idea of how town meeting works. Okay. Beyond that, uh, the rules of engagement today, I would like to try <laughs> this, I would when we come to the discussion of any article, I'm going to ask you, number one, to be to the point, not vulgar, and to respect everybody's right to speak. But I'd like you to think about what you're going to say before you just stick your hand up and get recognized and say it, because what I would like to try today that we haven't done before is I'd like to 
allow you only once to speak on each article. So you're going to get one shot at it up to three minutes, which I can get myself in trouble speaking in far less time than three minutes. So I think you'll all be fine. And so when you want to speak, raise your hand when I recognize you. We're going to have two runners with microphones because I did not like the everybody having to walk up to the microphone last time. The runners worked a lot better. So we are going to do that. And like I say, try to think about what you're going to talk about because I'd really like to limit you to once on each article. The, only, the other change is when you first get the microphone, state what your name is. I don't need to know what road you live on. Just state who you are because with the apparatus we have outside, we already know you're from town. So we don't really need to know that. We just need to know your name. Is that fair enough? Okay. So with that, I guess we're going to Article 1. Oh, wait a minute. We need to test. We need to test our clickers. So, Bill Belichick, will he be coaching the Patriots next year? Yes or no? And let's vote. And we have a problem. Okay, we think we've got it solved. Once again, Bill Belichick, our coach next year, yes or no? Okay, as, as far as your, we're still having problems, but it, it has been brought to my attention that there's five buttons on here and people are wondering, well, green is yes, uh, red, 2B is no, and 3C is abstain. Those are the only three buttons we have to worry about if we get a system going where we have to worry about buttons. And you can, you can press the buttons as many times as you want. The last button you press is what's voted on. Correct. You can press them as many times as you want, any vote, but only the last press counts. It's not working. Yes? I have no idea. Yes, but we see results up here on a... Yeah, it's, it's on my end because the base is not working. This is why we have a space. Yes. Let everybody know they don't have to press send. Okay, so you don't have to press send. You just, you just press whichever one you're going to press. And if you see a letter come up... Coinciding with what you voted. Then you know that you've pressed that button and it's working. Well... It's working on your end. It's not working on our end. That's all
lights are on. No, I think we're going to have to go old school. No, it's not even detecting it. So we have to not try both, both faces. Sing us a song, we're going to have to go old school. Unfortunately, it doesn't, but I am. Right, we'll double check that. So do, do you want me to proceed the old yes. way? proceed the old-fashioned way and apologize profusely to everybody for me for this nonsense. Okay, we're, we're going to go old school. Cool. We're good? Okay. Yeah, we're going to have to go the old, yeah, go old school. Okay, we are going old school. And the town clerk apologizes profusely for the system not working. She's a little bit out of shape. Okay, Article 1. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, just so that you know, I'm, I'm Phil Cantor. I'm the chair of the Conway Select Board. Next to me, Erica Goldman. Next to her, Eric, uh, Chris, Chris Waldo. We are, we are the Conway Select Board. You our town meeting. So you are the legislature in this, um, and we are here to ask this, your permission to spend monies, um, most of which is your tax money, and to adopt certain policies. Policies are an expression of a community's priorities. Um, so, and just so that you know, the motions, so there, there are two documents titled motions, sorry for the confusion. The one, town meeting time motions, those are the types of motions that you, as the legislature, the town meeting, can make on the floor. The other document the mo are the motions that we, as the select board, are requesting, and that they, are, they are actually the legal document, that the, the, the legal wording that we are voting on here. The warrant is, uh, a notification of the topics that are covered in the mo in the in the motions, but the motions are what we vote on. So, motion number one, article number one, I move that the town transfer ten thousand dollars from free cash to the general fund compensated absences account. We have motion and second. Dis explanation. This, yeah, so, so this, is, this is to, um, it, it's sort of a bookkeeping thing to maintain the balance in our funds uh, so that the town has money available to pay out accrued personnel benefits in the event of termination of employment or especially in our case retirements. So. Questions, discussion? I call the question. Is that on the list? Okay, someone's calling the question. Second. Second. Okay, we have a second on calling the question. Any discussion on that? Okay, we're voting on, and it can be a voice vote. Calling the question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Very good. Okay. Don't you have to vote? Now, on the motion itself, we have a motion and second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No, we're, not using our we're, not, we're, we're using our voices just in the old fashioned way. Okay. Article 2, because that, that passed. Unanimously. I move that the town approve a line-to-line -line transfer of $3,074 from the police department salary line 1-210-5400-000-110-0 to the police department expenses line 001-210-5400-000-110-0. For equipment and training. Explanation? We have a second. So, this is uh, a line to line transfer. It's not an extra tax, uh, but, but it's there, there are excess funds, if you want to look at it that way, in the salary line due to a personnel change or a retirement. Um, and this is a request to move it to a different line for police department expenses. Um, and that's about it. There's... Okay. Any other discussion? Let's vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 2 is approved. Article 3. Uh, yeah. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $1.5 million to pay for emergency deficit spending for town road repairs and other flood related expenses, including engineering and design, and to meet said appropriation, authorize the town treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow said amount under and pursuant to General Law Chapter 44, Section 8, Subsection 9, or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town or take any other action relative to. Okay, I'm sorry, that was the warrant I was reading. That was two, -third, two, -third, two thirds vote required, but that is actually word for word what the motions are, anyway. Um, Okay, we have motion on Article 3. Well, it was pretty self-explanatory, I believe. We have a second on that motion. We're open for discussion. Is your hand up? He's coming. Hi there, uh, my name's Philip, and uh, it's actually pertinent to this. I live on Maine Poland Road. <laughs> um, so I just want to draw attention to um, the question of what's going to happen in the future when these kinds of events repeatedly occur. For example, on Maine Poland Road, there were, I think, five or six culverts that were washed out. They were replaced, but they will surely clog, and that'll be that um, for in the next storm. And likewise, the road washed out into pristine, ecological, protected lands and um, created quite a devastation to local habitat, and that will happen again. Um, I know for a fact that that section of road isn't necessary. We don't need it. Um, so part of what I'm asking is, uh, are there maybe degrowth kinds of solutions as well, ideas that could um, have net benefits for the town, save money, and not necessarily be related to just throwing money uh, down the toilet, yeah. So, so the, there's a multifaceted answer here. I'm sorry to digress, but um, the one of the things that the state is doing um, they, uh, that I testified before, and you saw it 
it was excellent coverage of this in the recorder and on NPR and uh, and on Bear Country Radio. Uh, the state, we're, we're one of only four states in the union that does not have a disaster relief fund. That if FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Association, MEMA, or the Massachusetts version of that, does not declare an emergency, and there are very high financial thresholds for them to do so because Massachusetts is a very wealthy state. Um, uh, um, the, but, but we're one of only a few states that does not have a separate fund to address these issues. And so there is now uh, a bill that had a record number of co-sponsors that is pending uh, that would create, and, and you know, when, when you look at the, there's a Pew Charitable Trust study, when you look at states like West Virginia, Alabama, Mississippi have these disaster relief funds and we don't. Um, no, I know, I know. Um, the, so, so, you know, hopefully, um, hopefully in the future, since they have secured a dedicated stream of funding for this legislation from capital gains, tax surpluses, um, that, that would be great if that passes. And if that does pass, then if such a thing happens in the future, we may receive some state financial assistance. Um, that w w one of the things that is most disconcerting is that they, the only the only way that the state gives you financial assistance in a, in, in uh, for us in a month long really a month long single continuous rain event was is if they if they enact a special legisl act of legislation a supplemental appropriation and that's very difficult to do for towns like us when we are insignificant population wise. And um, if it's just us or, or a couple other small towns, uh, we're never going to get an appropriation because we don't count. We don't have enough votes. That we're, that we're a bad political play for all of the politicians from Eastern Mass. Um, and, uh, and try as our local legislators might, uh, and they have put forth a considerable effort. Natalie Blaze, Polmark, they've done, they've tried. Um, there, after this storm, they, the state did finally, just last week, enact a $15 million supplemental appropriation for all statewide disasters. Uh, so that includes not just Deerfield and Greenfield, and Northampton in our area, um, but also the Leminsters and the Haverhills and the Andover and North Andover and all of these very large communities that have put substantially more dollars in losses on the board than we have. So we'll, um, there's a possibility that we'll get something because it, the, 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 the legislation that passed does not appropriate these amounts to the various towns. There's a separate subcommittee of the legislation that does that. So um, we're optimistic that we'll get something, whether it's $100,000 or whether it's a million dollars is we don't know or anywhere in between. And that's one of the things, that's one of the reasons why I say the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is an inherently unreliable partner for towns like us. And, um, yeah. So Bernie. Um, sorry, is this, oh, yes, it is working. Um, just to your point, I think um, having the discussion of having how to build back resiliency, I think would be a really great topic for a select board meeting for, you know, for us to do it more in depth, because I don't know that it, here we could actually get into those specifics. Yeah, because I'm saying I don't want to approve funding that's just going to go This funding is. Yeah. Go. Okay, so sorry, just he was saying that he wanted to um, talk about the fund. This funding is for work that's already been done. So this is only to replenish our coffers for work that's already been done. We're not talking about more other future work or future disasters. Woman in the, uh, Mary McClintock first. Sorry. Thanks, Veronique, for that clarification. I'm Mary McClintock. I live right down the hill um, with a driveway that had a lot of expensive work done on it. Um, and I'm in, I'm basically in more than $12,000 of debt 
now that I wasn't in the beginning of July. Um, and I guess the question, what I want to say, I mean, I think the topic of what do we do in the future is a very important one, and I would hope that somebody would actually, like maybe the select board would actually call a meeting to have a discussion about the various concerns. Um, the thing I guess I want to know about this, my understanding is this is um, work that's already been done. It's basically that if this is sort of, a, it's this, and I want the clarification, this sort of erases financially what, we, what happened with the storm. Is this correct in terms of, or it doesn't erase it, but it, like, we had all this damage, we spent all this money to fix it, and um, that means that money isn't available for all the other things it was supposed to be available for. So this basically gets that money back to being available for other things, and the net result is the town's in debt for a million and a half or however much. The, I guess the question is, did we spend a million and a half, and we really need to borrow all that million and a half if the, um, if the state in a month says, oh yeah, Conway, you can have it a million and a half to, um, to re you know, replenish your coffers, then we don't borrow the money. It's, explain the process a little more, a little bit of the history and the process, please. So the, <clears throat> the, the initial, if authorized to borrow up to $1.5 million, the initial borrow would be 500,000. And <clears throat> because that is, that is the approximate amount that we have spent to date on our roads and culverts. We have estimated, there, there was an, an, an estimate with receipts and et cetera of $3.9 million to the total damage to the town. But um, we, um, the, the highway department um, ha has been working hard to keep the cost down. Um, I'll just, you know, call, call out our, the, the highway supervisor, Ron Sweet, for the amount of overtime that he personally has worked um, that is not compensated overtime. Um, so th just thank you for that. And the, um, but we, we would propose, so what, what this would permit is the initial borrow of 500,000. Each time we borrow, an, an, we make it, we borrow an additional state house note um, the, the cost of that would be about $600 for that borrowing process. So, but we would only borrow the amount that we absolutely need to. And, you know, there is, if town meeting decides we only want to authorize $500,000, we're very likely to have to call another special town meeting for in the future. But a lot of it depends on state reimbursement and we don't know what that's going to be. Um, so, this is sort of this. The wording of this would give the select board, uh, the town treasurer, the flexibility to borrow if needed, and it's only if needed. Um, so that's. Do you still want to speak? Uh, yep. You first, please. Hello. Okay. Sorry. Um, I just want to talk Ident in support. Identify yourself. Oh, my name is Teresa Brockerty. I just want to talk in support of um, the ability that we have right now to leverage a safety net for us to be able to uh, properly run our town without in the future negatively affecting our tax base in a way that is so hard for us to um, with many of us on fixed incomes where we're already talking about ways how we're going to leverage future costs and raising costs. Um, this is a way for us to safely be able to leverage uh, the ability to mitigate this disastrous effect that took away the majority of our budget in a very short period of time. And we still have six months of the fiscal year left to get to go through snow season of plowing our roads. The DPW only has three CDL drivers. If you take away the ability for them to contract um, plowers to come and do snow removal, I mean, what, what, what does that do for systematically how we run? And then also if you're 
taking away the ability to borrow? What does that do to the future budgets and the future spending that the town is able to do? What does that mean that departmentals have to do future cuts for the next three to five years because we're having to uh, buffer this huge um, amount of spending? I, I really appreciate um, the select board and their work with the state um, and their communication. I'm, I'm, I really feel that it's positive um, work that is being done, even if it is a small amount that comes back to us in reimbursement, it at least shows we're working together that, you know, Conway is worth saving and worth investing in some form of infrastructure and resiliency. Um, I was so happy to see the MVP program and, um, out here and talking about the resiliency projects that are going to be happening in the future. I strongly suggest everyone get involved with that so we can figure out in which ways we need to maximize um, our, our tax dollars to make sure that the most vulnerable areas of Conway are taken care of so we can restore habitat. But this is like a... a an opportunity for us to give ourselves a buffer and a leverage in a really, really um, important time of need. And um, I'm in full support of, of, of this today. Nelson Shiflett. Nelson Shiflett. Um, I would like someone to explain the disparity between the the number of the $1.5 million uh, and the estimates that we've seen, uh, we've just heard about of closer to $4 million. Uh, so the, I guess the, another question would be, are we likely to, to, assuming that there is no money available from the state, are we likely to face another borrowing issue uh, at next uh, summer, or next spring's town meeting? Uh, outside of that, I'm in favor of this of this article. Did, did you want a response? Oh, yeah, can we respond to that? Right, but did you want a response to the? That was a question. Can we respond to that? Sure. Okay. All right. Um, so I know it is it is a bit confusing because the we had. We declared two states of emergency, July 10th, July 21st. Sorry. Okay, is that better? Yeah. Um, and so the initial damage assessment when um, Ron and I ran around to all the roads to look came to $3.9 million. Um, in the meantime, MassDOT has just been amazing uh, for this town. They've done so much work. They've worked on five different roads in town, which reduces the cost that we will then have to pay. So at this moment, we have spent about $550,000 of town money um, fixing the roads. Ron estimates it will be a million dollars by the end of June. So we're hoping that we will be whole and done with a million dollars. Something else may come up, so we didn't want to limit ourselves, so it's up to 1.5, but we're not planning to spend it if we don't need to. In the meantime, we're waiting to hear from the state there is a $15 million supplemental budget that was just signed by the governor. We will, we've been told we will get something, but we have no idea how much and when. This borrowing would actually be an anticipation note. It's only going to be for one year um, while we wait and see what comes through from the state and how things um, you know, play out for us. If best case scenario is we get a million from the state and we're done. Gary yeah, my question was answered. I see you. Um, Lee Whitcomb, I'd like to know what the impact will be on the fiscal 25 taxes and going forward of this. Suppose there's a $500,000 borrowing uh, for a one year anticipation note. Um, that plus its interest, how is that going to affect the 25 taxes? First year is mostly interest. 
Um, so the question, in case you didn't hear, it was about what this impact would be on the FY25. And my understanding, um, I'm not the treasurer, but my understanding is that we would be paying interest only, I think it was in the forty dollars to $50,000 range that would be put on to the FY25. But correct. again, I'm not the treasurer and I don't have the number in my head. I apologize. That is correct. Hi, Pamela Gilmore. Uh, my question is, uh, are we being put in a position of needing to borrow money at interest because the town has not had any influx, influx of income since we have not received a, uh, a real estate tax bill yet? And when can we anticipate that? Yeah, that those two events are not related. We would be borrowing. We would be borrowing. Um, we would be asking for permission to borrow, uh, for regardless, because we have spent in deficit, and the amounts that we raise through taxation are already accounted for in our budget that was passed last June. So, thank you, thank you. Alice Singer, uh, Roaring Brook Road. I also chair the town finance committee. Uh, to answer, offer some context and answer some questions in terms of the tax impact. If we were to borrow a million dollars and the range would be about 7% for a period of six months, you're talking about $35,000. So I don't, hopefully it won't be in the range of greater than 50,000. Another important perspective to answer your question, I forget the woman who first spoke when we raised this Article 3, in terms of the uh, operating budget, that's different. This is outside of our operating budget. So the operating budget is different from this. This is completely, uh, this is outside of the operating budget. This is a capital budget item that hopefully we'll only have to borrow money for short term. So I hope that helps to answer information. And the other important thing is we have enough of financial viability in our town. We're sitting on a good amount of free cash right now, over and above what's usually the suggested range. That's, among other things, the really good work that our town treasurer has done, collecting on tax titles, as well as uh, some other infalls that were a little above that we had originally anticipated. So we are in good stead. We have close to $700,000 of free cash, so we have a buffer. And by free cash, what I mean is that we have the ability to go into the next fiscal year with monies that we could either use to stabilize the tax base, hopefully not have to increase taxes, but more importantly, not have to raise tax or tax rate because we have to pay the interest expense and the borrowings that we're proposing in Article 3. Hello, Elizabeth Stowe. Um, as a homeowner, uh, kind of microcosm, uh, macro, microcosm of uh, your relationship with the state, I don't know what my taxes are going to be for this year. Usually I would have paid them in October and I would know what I could plan, but I can't. I've heard this number of 10% they may have gone up by. So in my position is that I cannot see giving more than the allowance of $500,000 at this meeting now. And I do very much appreciate the information that we have $700,000 in free cash for the town right now. So I think that 500,000 between now and January is what would be appropriate to okay today. Thank you. Thank you. Lee Whitcombs, uh, Lee Whitcombs speaking for the assessors. Is it's closer? Closer. Okay. okay, that better? Yeah. Okay. Lee Whitcombs speaking for the assessors. The tax bills have been horribly delayed, but, uh, and Jan, our treasurer collector, is away this coming week, but we expect them to be issued as soon as she gets back. Now, the 10% that you mentioned is not an increase in the tax bills. That is what we had to add to as an across-the-board adjustment to property values in order to bring them up to the current market value of properties in Conway. That's a legal obligation that we have to tax at full and fair market value. So that 10% was necessary to get us up there to where properties are selling these days. The tax rate is uh, to be finalized, I believe, on Monday, and it has come down quite considerably from $17.15 last year to 16.40 for the coming year. 
So that reduction is going to help to offset the increases in what we all pay out of pocket. Um, I can't give you a flat percentage, but it's, um, it's being moderated by that reduction in the tax rate. Uh, Peter Jeswald, um, I have been involved in town politics and money for a long, long time here in Conway. And I know this select board and I know a lot of the people sitting in front of us. I trust their judgment complicitly and I completely support borrowing the total amount they are asking for. Nobody else? Karen Eldred, I've not yet heard a clear answer about what happens with the money if we happen to get money from the state. Uh, as Veronique stated before, if we get money from the state, then we do not borrow. Or we borrow less. Hi, I'm Tom McCarthy. Has the town of Conway ever issued bonds to raise money in this way? Y yes, the town of Conway has issued bonds uh, in the past. In the, I think for the first 200 years, that was the only way to do it. But um, yeah, building the schools, building the schools, we issued bonds, and. Um, the school committee has in the past issued bonds as well. They're legally entitled to. Um, is it? But right now we're doing state house notes because it's a better financial arrangement. We don't have to pay the bond costs. Bond costs are very expensive. Bond council is very expensive. It's not something that we would, it doesn't make fiscal sense to do that on our own. Are we on? Don Siegel, I have a question about engineering, um, whether the state was able to help with uh, engineering work as well as the work they did on the town, whether they'd be available ongoing or whether that's an additional expense, and whether we're taking into account uh, future weather-related catastrophes in the engineering repair and repair of the roads. The, the state, um, MassDOT has done some engineering on the, work, the, 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 the roads that they've agreed to work on. The federal government has multiple agencies with really experienced engineers. We've applied to all of these different programs. We didn't, quali we didn't quote, qualify, end quote, for any of them. Um, and and the, the reasoning has been just absolutely maddening. Uh, when an emergency water said USDA emergency water said pr protection program uh, to to, re to to engineer all of the areas all the roads that border bodies of water, um, we actually were criticized in that for not meeting specifically the criteria, but also um, that we didn't we didn't call them the day that it was raining. We waited a couple of days so that you know people could get out and about and ascertain what the damage was. Um, so we didn't qualify for things like that for those reasons. It, the, over and over again, or the attempt to get state and federal government assistance has been met with a uh, hard and fast no. Um, uh, the, the, we, did, we did have some assistance from, FERC, from Franklin uh, Regional Council of Governments. Um, some, some of their highway planning engineers have done some, uh, not quite engineering plans, but they have sketched out a remedy but potentially for uh, Pine, the, the whole Pine Hill watershed, uh, going down into Upper Baptist Hill Road and River Street, and Baptist Hill Road and Cemetery Road and Emerson Hollow Road. Um, uh, but, but basically, we're on our own, and we are, we are, uh, we're hampered in that our actual stormwater management, stormwater system is all from the 1800s, most of it. Um, 
It's just, it's not at all envisioned. It, it just can't deal with what it's. And, and there's also a whole side to that too, though. You know, the, the uh, mass dot, the 116, they, they have to engineer Route 116, I believe it's for a 50 year flood or a 100 year flood. That, that road got wiped out twice in the storm. And so to actually engineer stormwater management for a storm system that gives us eight inches of rain in an hour, um, the, the amount of oh, what that would look like, the overbuilt environment that that would look like, most people would find it aesthetically unpleasant. Um, uh, so um, there's a lot to all this, but we're on our own. Hey, uh, it's Wilder McCoy. Uh, fully in support of the measures, but to the, to the last comment, I'm actually interested. If we're looking at the town taking out 500,000 up to potentially 1.5 million for a reactive, uh, basically, adaptation to the damage that was done by the storm, I'm wondering if we are at all looking into more proactive management or using some of this money, or if we're having this conversation thinking about taking out debt at, is if it's 7% or maybe, it depends how you, I'm not sure the mechanics of how you're going to raise the capital exactly, but I'd be interested in more, in seeing if you've explored more of this proactive watershed management like we were, you were just discussing with neighboring towns like Ashfield and if you want to take just a portion of what you have to spend, definitely not the whole thing, but some sort of portion to look at how you can maybe proactively manage some of this a bit. So hopefully I, answer everyone's question to include the gentleman over here. Um, the other maddening part about this is that any money that the state gives us for repairs can only be for um, repairing roads as they were prior to the damage. Uh, it does not include upgrading those roads, engineering services, water mitigation. So hopefully that answers your question. This is just to, to pay for the roads that are repaired and still need to be repaired. Um, as Phil stated before, we're taking separate measures to try to work with engineering firms on the water mitigation going forward. I'd like to call the question. Phyllis Jeswell. Okay. So I'm gonna like to call a question. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> okay. Article 3. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 3 passes. Article 4. I move that the town authorize the select board to convey a fee simple interest in the property known as and numbered zero off Ashfield Road as further identified in the town assessor's records as map 409 lot 18.1 through deed to the successful bidder Hank Horstman for the sum of $6,501 on such terms and conditions as the select board deems to be in the best interest of the town and to execute any and all agreements and documents to effectuate the conveyance of said property, if any. The two thirds vote is required for this. We have a second explanation. So um, there was there was an auction that uh, of this property, which was seized for back taxes you, uh, that was you author the, the June meeting, I believe, authorized that. Um, the successful bidder was a gentleman from Conway named Hank Horseman. Um, this allows us to actually convey the property for the amount that of the bid um, and to restore this to the tax rolls, which we'd like to do. Mary McClintock, it's coming. It is here. <laughs> Mary McClintock, thank you runners. I like, I, thank you for not making us not run to the microphone. Um, 
so I guess my question with this is, is both specifically related to this and in general around tax taking. Um, what was the amount of tax taxes that were um, owed and how does that relate to how it was the how much was paid by in the auction? There is a thing called um, tax equity theft that the Supreme Court of the United States recently ruled that, say for example, I'm ten thousand dollars behind in paying my taxes. And uh, the town tries to get it from me, tries to get it from me, can't get it from me. They decide to take the property and to um, sell it to get that money. And say they sell it for $50,000. What the United States Supreme Court has said is that the town gets $10,000. That, that what has typically happens is the town will get $50,000 for the property and that will go into the town um, budget, into you know, the town uh, bank account, and the person whose tax, whose property has been taken, doesn't get that forty thousand of equity. It's called tax equity theft. The city of Greenfield is currently facing two lawsuits related to this. So I think it's really important as a town that if we need to do a tax taking, because we really they owed the taxes, we really need to get the tax money that we get the tax money that's owed, but then the whoever's property it was gets the rest of it. So I'm just, so, th so that's why I'm asking, what was the amount, how does this relate, and how, does, how is Conway dealing with this issue going forward? So Lee's gonna give her opinion on this too, but just the, the basic back tax amount was in the vicinity of 20,000. The prior owner that had not paid taxes for many, many years was deceased. There were basically was no owner. We did at least two auctions without a bidder. I believe it was the third auction yes. that um, Mr. Horseman w bid. And it is a landlocked parcel of no value to anyone um, except for a couple, the, the two adjoining landowners. So actually we were really fortunate that he agreed to buy this. Um, so, um, uh, and uh, we're, not, we're not that, we're not Greenfield, we don't do that. Uh, and we're aware of those issues and that's not us. Yes. So. May I, uh, Lee Whitcomb, with regard to the equity issue, the per former owner had passed away um, many years ago. She had one heir her son, who actually predeceased her. So there is no legal owner of record at all. And um, once we had identified the, this ownership, it became obvious that there were two abutters, Hank Horstman and myself. Quite frankly, it's up behind me, it's all legend porcupines. But it has, <laughs> you know, it has a joint boundary with Hank and then squares out his property very nicely. So we had no interest. He was interested in it and offered this much to the town, uh, bid this much to the town, which does not cover the taxes owed. Um, but we are aware of the equity issue. Jan and I have talked about it. The town is talking about it. It's an, uh, an important question. Ready to vote? Okay, Article 4, in favor? Aye. Opposed? Article 5. Mr. Rod Moderator, I move to split Article 5 into two separate motions um, due to the fact that the two statutory sections cited in Article 5, Section 5K and 5N, cannot be voted on in the same motion. So section 5K for elderly folks, section 5N for veterans has to be voted separately. So I move to split the Article 5 into two separate motions, which would read identically as the current motions, except for they would just be, one would be just, just section 5K and one would be just section 5N. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Is there any discussion about that? Okay, let's vote. Let's split. We're voting to split Article 5 into 5K section and 5N section. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
So moved. So then the first one, I move that the town accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 39, Section 5K, and request the select board to establish a property tax work-off program for taxpayers who are qualifying seniors over 60 years of age to take effect in fiscal year 25. Okay, so we're moving on 5K. Correct. Everybody understand that? Okay, there's no discussion, I'm sure. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The second part of that, I move that the town accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 59, Section 5N, and request the select board to establish a property tax work-off program for taxpayers who are veterans uh, to take effect in fiscal year 25. We have a second. Discussion? Let's vote on it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 6. I move that the town appropriate $7,000 from free cash for software, hardware, and training to allow the assessors to enter information on site during assessments. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, let's vote. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Article 6 is moved, is passed. Article 7. I, 7A, I move that the town appropriate $7,825 from the Community Preservation Fund Open Space Recreation Account for use by the Town of Conway Open Space Committee as the fiscal agent for the Select Board approved plan from Pollinate Conway for Veterans Memorial Park Habitat Restoration with Native Plants. We have a second. Any discussion? It's coming. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name is Julia Stone. I'd like to ask the Community Preservation Committee uh, Chair how they, what kind of procedure they went to to put these articles on town warrant because I don't see the recommendation and the vote record. And uh, I'd like to know how they ensured compliance with the community preservation laws for what Ever items are eligible for the funding. If I understood the question correctly, this um, article was put forward by the Community Preservation Committee. So the organ, you know, the groups that wanted to get funds from our um, community preservation account went to the community preservation committee made their case it was voted on by that committee and therefore put on to the warrant is was that your question yes yeah. oh absolutely anybody who goes forward before the community preservation committee has to fill out a very detailed application and then that committee votes on it on whether or not they want to put it forward onto the warrant for town meeting did the Community Preservation Committee vote on yes. both of these items? Yes. What was the vote? I don't know the exact number. All I can tell you is that it passed because it's on the warrant. Right. They need to vote on recommendation. We don't. I see you, Bob. I'm Janet Shays. I participated in the, the hearing that the Community Preservation Committee held, which of course was in accordance with all our laws and regulations and open to the public and posted. And there was a detailed uh, discussion and presentation of this proposal. Our, 
pollinate. Conway folks have done an amazing job, and they are uh, very careful with getting the best prices and getting volunteers, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, at the end of that meeting, the Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to, uh, for this proposal, and to then the next step is forward on to town meeting right here. My name is Robert Baker. The only concern I got with this article is over a year ago, we presented and approved an amount of money to be spent on Pollinate Conway at uh, the South Deerfield Road location of the Audubon Society. And to my knowledge, that, that work has never been done. Well, they were going to put pollinators in there. So that, that was a separate group of people that has nothing to do with this actual group. Um, and there was some work done, but that, that you are correct, that work has never been completed to date. Well then, um, the only other concern I have about that is, if that work has never been completed, is there a sum of money sitting there that could be used toward this? Um, not really. No. We, we are still working on trying to complete that project. Um, and since it was actually voted by town meeting um, through the CPC, we would have to go back to the CPC, I think, because those funds are specifically given for that purpose. In other words, we can't just swap out funds without going through the whole um, Community Preservation Committee process. Oh, where's our mic man? Oh, he's coming. Hi, Tom McCarthy. What is the balance in the Community Preservation Fund right now? It, um, it, it's over a million dollars, all told. Um, it's di divided into multiple subcategories, but they also have the legal ability to shift money from those subcategories around, but it is over a million dollars. Call the question. Do we have a second? All right, all in favor of calling the question? Aye. Opposed? Okay, we're voting on Article 7A, just so we're clear on that, right? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Article 7B. I move that the town appropriate $14,074.80 from the Community Preservation Fund Historic Recess Resources Account for use by the Town of Conway Office of the Town Clerk to advance archival storage of the town's vital records. Second. We have motion and a second. Any discussion? So, um, is this main Ostein Fike? Um, this fourteen thousand dollars would be to scan the archive, the archives. It's actually a lot more than that. Um, very quick background: When I was cleaning out the vault when I moved over to Town Hall, I found that a lot of our vital records from going back into the late 1800s were just in cardboard boxes. They had become wet from when we had the fire, they were molding, they're falling apart. The majority of this money is to pay for the archival binders and sleeves that will protect them for time. So they, they will be scanned, put into these sleeves, put into binders and dust jackets, so they'll be protected. So would this be something that um, qualifying seniors or veterans could it's do? It's possible. And would, if that were to occur, would that lessen the amount needed? 
No, this is strictly for the archival for supplies. The supplies. Yes. Thank you. What, what's the volume of uh, vital records? How it, many boxes will you uh, need? There are quite a few boxes. We're talking about all of our birth, death, and marriage records going back to the beginning of the town. Right. So 250 years worth. There is, I'm going to need approximately 30 binders for these. And the binders, the sleeves, and the dust jackets average $400 per binder. Okay, so 30 binders. At four hundred dollars a piece, approximately. I'm, you know, this is uh, the accurate to the penny figures were given to the CPC. That's where that final dollar amount comes from. So, just off the top of my head, that's the approximate per binder. Okay. I would still like to hear from the CPC uh, chair or representative about their procedure on that, about their voting. Because historic resources account, if mm -hmm. I quote the CPC law. This is our historical records that are being preserved. Correct. And I'm not against preserving them, obviously. My, I'm trying to figure out if CPC followed the exact legal procedure so we don't get into mm -hmm. a mess like we did with the mm -hmm. church mm -hmm. a few years ago. From me, I can say the same thing Janet said. I filled out a very detailed application, an expense request detailing all the purchases. We had a meeting, publicly posted, public meeting, lots of discussion and questions. At the end, they voted on it unanimously to move it forward onto the warrant. Do you remember for the day of the meeting? Because the one that was originally scheduled was postponed. Was the, it was. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. I mean, I could go back through the town calendar and get it for you. But it was the, the very next meeting that they had. Janet, do you remember the date of the open space? Because I think it was the same date. It was originally posted for October 16, and it was canceled or postponed. Oh, right here. Behind. Could you hand that? Oh, she's right behind you. <laughs> so, um, Kate McDonough and I was at the meeting, and it was on October 25th, Wednesday. It was posted. Janet Shea's just wanting to respond a little further on the questions about the community preservation procedures. Um, they have, it's unfortunate that nobody from the community is speaking up now, but I, I've followed carefully since I left the committee, and uh, I, that's one of the main things they do is make sure they're doing everything right. And, and I think perhaps a, a separate meeting should be scheduled uh, for you, for us to show you where all that documentation and records are, and then we can um, make sure you're satisfied and everybody else, and move on. I heard a call the question, and a second. Okay. All in favor of calling the question? Aye. Opposed. Okay, Article 7B is what we're voting on. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Article 8. I move that the town amend its general bylaws by adding a new section 10 to the form and conduct of town government, comma, the town meeting, as written in the warrant, and by renumbering existing sections 10 through 21 thereunder to sections 11 through 22 respectively. I heard a second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, shall we vote? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Article 8 is passed. 
move to adjourn. I didn't have to ask for a second. <laughs> Could everybody please just leave the unused clickers on the table where they checked in on their way out? <laughs> All in favor of adjournment? Have a, have a, have a. <laughs>